Hey, you wanna do it, your boy, The Hop here. And today, it's just gonna be a little video coming at you in audio form. And uh, it's just gonna be, I'm gonna share with you a little, little conversation that I overshared like any good old intellectual on Discord. So I just need to like pump out a little bit of content, you know, just do a little, psh, 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 hey, algorithm, uh, share my stuff, please. And so this is just a little something, something to, this is a thesis. This is a thesis I have for a video that I want to do, but to be honest, it ain't gonna be coming out for like several months because who's got time for that? Not me. So I hope you enjoy. So the concept title is something along the lines of red-pilled manospheres, hyper-reality, and crystallogical masculinities. A deconstruction of online hyper-masculine role models in light of a potential crystallogical alternative. That's the thesis title. And so here's the actual thesis itself, the abstract. So, my thesis is that red-pilled manospheres. On the internet, you constantly go through waves of supposed male role models who try selling young men a view of what manhood and masculinity looks like. In the mid three to late 2010s, this was the anti-SJWs which set up Trump to really well to sell the idea of the strong conquering man who doesn't take crap from anyone. Big boy. These two complement and perpetuate each other like butter on toast. You also have the Jordan Peterson types who, in selling a certain type of masculinity which, irrespective of whether or not he is right or wrong, he perpetuates the same anti-SJW masculinity. Three to today, where the anti-SJWs are no longer relevant, but their impact is still present through red pillars, a term the anti-SJWs also used, who sell young men a view of hustle, strength and power, with the rewards being wealth, women and respect. Hyper-reality. Whilst nobody to few people know any role models like these red pillars in real life, young men gravitate to these online personalities and begin to view them like they are truly people who they should take life advice from, as if to replace the true role models that we are supposed to find in friendships, family, church, school, etc. Now, for some young boys and men who aren't lucky enough to have physical role models, these digital ones become the substitute. But this is a problem. Digital role models are not role models. They are media representations, simulations of role models. They do not know you, your life, your circumstance, what is best for you as an individual. Yet they prescribe chasing after hustle, strength and power as if they know you or what's best for you. Through immersion into their salesmanship of masculinity, they and their message may become more real to the young men than anything a physical role model could offer. This has impacts in the positive and negative. This is, you know, it's good that young men are encouraged to exercise, develop self-control and discipline. It is bad that young men are encouraged to view certain people groups that they don't have any in real life experience with as the enemy who must be crushed. What color is your brigade? Crystallogical masculinities. I am under the impression that there are aspects of manosphere masculinities that I could take and prescribe. Exercise, discipline, self-control, and the desire for self-improvement. However, these things are not the highest values, but the fruits of highest values. You should exercise because you are human. You should develop discipline and self-control because you are flawed. You should desire self-improvement because you should want to be like God. But you shouldn't want any of these things because they may or may not lead to wealth, women, and respect. If men want to learn how to be men, then they should look to the most human human, the truest man, Christ Jesus. Not anti-SJWs, or Peterson, or Hamza, and not Andrew Tate. While I see these red pillars selling a view of manhood that looks strong on the surface, looks appealing in aesthetics, we must remember that God uses what the world considers weak and foolish in order to shame what the world considers strong and wise. If Christ Jesus took Andrew Tate's little advice, then Jesus would not have been crucified and we would not celebrate the cross. The red-pilled manosphere has more in common with Roman imperialism than it does Jesus. Like good Christian virtue ethicists, we should take what is good from the red pillars, like the advice for self-improvement, but true self-improvement is found by the Holy Spirit, not the gym. Improvement of the heart and soul, not just the body and finance. Okie dokie, so that was a mouthful, some might say, and that was the thesis for the video that I want to do, broadly speaking, titled uh, Red-Pilled Manospheres, Hyper-Reality, and Christian Masculinities.
uh, uh, Christological masculinities. That is the thesis. That video will not be coming out, eh, probably for another half a year to maybe even a year. And that's entirely because like I don't have the platform to pump out stuff like freaking PewDiePie um, or Captain Christianity or anyone who is big and bad. So, uh, oh my <laughs> therefore, like and subscribe, smash that like button, hit the subscribe, and oh, just send this video to the youth pastor who is reluctant to your radicalization, folks. Radicalized into what? Radical love. That's right. We radicalize our friends and family and youth pastors into radical forms of love. <laughs> we reject the uh, radicalization of manosphere masculinities and embrace Christological masculinities. Thank you very much, folks. Love you. Like and subscribe. Uh, love your neighbor.